morning. Morning, Peter. Welcome. Thank you for coming today to take this interview. So let's go this way. Great. It's great to be here. <laughs> so I know you studied at Yale uh, and spent some time in Germany as an undergraduate. Uh, and then received a fellowship of teaching from Yale China Association and go to teach at Huazhong Normal University in Wuhan, China. Then start your career in Hong Kong. So could you please tell us a little bit about your early life? I was born and raised in New York and uh, I studied at Yale. I studied uh, comparative literature focusing on German and classical Greek. Um, and then um, I decided to apply for a fellowship to go to China mm -hmm. um, just to do something a bit different. And uh, I didn't think I would get the fellowship because I didn't know any Chinese. Mm. Uh, I had no experience um, in East Asian studies, but um, uh, I was very fortunate and I got picked and um, sent off to Wuhan. Um, so that was really a life-changing experience. You came to Hong Kong in 1989 so what attracted you uh, to Hong Kong at that time? I used to come to Hong Kong uh, pretty frequently when I was in Wuhan, mm -hmm. uh, maybe every few months. And I always was fascinated by Hong Kong. I thought, uh, this is such an amazing place. Uh, and one of the things that fascinated me was that uh, even though I was feeling more and more comfortable with my Chinese, I came here and I couldn't understand it word anybody was saying, but um, it was exciting and it was great. And I thought, you know, wow, I really need to try and see if I can find a way to live here and work here. So do you find any cultural difference uh, with other countries when you come to Hong Kong? And how do you adapt to that changes? Because I've been living in the mainland, um, it was probably a little bit harder to adapt to the mainland mm -hmm. uh, coming from the U.S. than it was to adapt to Hong Kong. But of course, you know, there were some differences. And uh, talking about free time, do you have any hobbies and uh, what you spend your leisure time, you know, here in Hong Kong and in Wuhan? So I do um, uh, exercise uh, pretty regularly. So I go to the gym and I go running. I also like yoga. Um, I play guitar, so um, I, I do that also. Uh, and then recently I picked up um, photography which, uh, you know, is great for Hong Kong because Hong Kong is actually a really um, interesting place to do street photography. I noticed that you can speak Mandarin and uh, uh, Cantonese very beautifully. <laughs> yes, so how did you learn those languages and how it uh, affect your experience living here? Mandarin mostly I learned um, when I was uh, in mainland China. You know, I studied, uh, I, I first studied when I was at Yale just the summer before I was sent off to Wuhan. So, uh, so I had to learn uh, more practical Chinese uh, when I got to Wuhan, but it definitely made a difference, a uh, huge difference in, in uh, my experience there. And then when I moved to Hong Kong, again, I, I thought it was really fascinating that I could feel so comfortable in Chinese and yet not understand the word that people were saying here. So um, I decided that I wanted to learn Cantonese and I found a teacher and I found some uh, textbooks that had been developed for British civil servants in the 1960s. Um, and so with those textbooks as a teacher, um, I, I was able to start picking up the language and, um, uh, and then uh, just started using it more often in daily life. I have done a little bit of uh, research on your working experience. I find out it's very inspiring. So could you uh, share with us how do you switch your career from uh, editor of Wall Street, Wall Street Journal and then uh, the head of a regulatory advisor and relations in UBS to finally the CEO of uh, uh, PWMA and uh, what is it like you know, uh, to start in your career in media field in Hong Kong uh, back then? See, 1989 when I started uh, in journalism in Hong Kong, um, there were um, there were a lot of journalists here, a lot of foreign journalists who were um, covering the Hong Kong story, and you know I was very fortunate to be able to get um, kind of an entry level position mm. as a, a night desk copy editor um, at uh, what was then called the Asian Wall Street Journal. The fact that I had uh, 
Chinese ability, you know, I could speak Mandarin and Cantonese was definitely a big help. Um, and eventually I was able to cover the Hong Kong story during the handover, which was really kind of a dream job. Um, you know, working uh, in journalism was a fantastic experience. Um, and, um, you know, I was, uh, I was fortunate to have a number of great roles, um, all working with uh, the Wall Street Journal. And then um, I was also very fortunate that um, other opportunities came my way and um, I joined UBS mm -hmm. as uh, the head of group governmental affairs for, um, for Asia Pacific um, and then that transitioned to, into a role uh, managing regulatory relations and regulatory affairs mm -hmm. um, uh, which um, was an opportunity to get kind of deeper into regulatory issues and then um, that led to an opportunity to take over um, running the PWMA, mm -hmm. uh, which is also a job which um, involves a lot of regulatory interaction, also a lot of policy issues, and um, uh, a lot of uh, interaction with the government and with regulators, um, which is something that you know I had um, become more experienced in through my roles at UBS. And talking about you know working uh, environment, uh, so uh, could you share with us a little bit about the working environment and cultures you compare with uh, other places or other areas uh, in Hong Kong? Uh, so you know it's um, uh, something people often say about Hong Kong is that uh, it has a very fast-paced working culture, mm -hmm. and you know I think they say it for a reason. It's really true. Um, things are so efficient here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you forget it when you live here, but when then you, you go someplace overseas and you, know, you go through an immigration line that's, you know, that's slower yeah. than what you're used to here, when you go to a shop and you know, the, the pace of service is not quite uh, what you get here in Hong Kong. You come back here and you really appreciate um, yes. how you know, incredibly efficient people are. So, uh Talking about work, and I know your association focuses a lot of uh, areas uh, such as talent, technologies, and uh, could you share a little bit about uh, this uh, for, for our audience? We do do a lot of work mm -hmm. uh, in trying to promote um, uh, talent development in, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, to try and address regulatory issues that are of mm -hmm. um, concern to our members. We do work on trying to understand um, the fintech environment and uh, where, um, you know, how our industry can improve in terms of digitalization. So, uh, one piece of work that we are um, just in the process of rolling out is a white paper that we've been working on together with the Tsinghua University PDC School of Finance. Mm -hmm. um, that's called Hong Kong 2035, a global mm -hmm. wealth management center. And this is um, a report that looks at Hong Kong's development as a wealth management center um, uh, in the context of China's development um, and China's broader economic strategy for 2035. Mm -hmm. um, and we look at a number of areas, including talent development and um, tech, uh, regulatory development, um, and risk management. Talk about talents. So given you have experience working in mainland China, also in Hong Kong, so can you please uh, you know, compare these two places about the, the talent pools? You know, I'm, I think there's just a tremendous amount of talent um, in China as a whole, that is for sure. <laughs> um, and, and Hong Kong too, you know, and, and I'll talk about um, you know, one experience that, um, um, that I've had personally over the last few years, which is developing a program called the Pilot Apprenticeship Program for mm -hmm. Private Wealth Management. Um, this is something that we do together with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, and every year we um, uh, we invite students at universities in Hong Kong to apply for um, these apprenticeship positions with private wealth management firms. And um, you know, we started this in 2017, and now we get um, 
over 1,200 applicants every wow. year uh, applying for you know, roughly about 50 positions working at our PWMA member firms. Mm. Um, and I have to say that you know, the quality of the, um, the applicants has just consistently impressed mm. um, us and the member firms that they end up working at. Mm -hmm. and a lot of our member firms have said that you know, this program has really um, opened their eyes because in the past they you know, used to focus on trying to hire interns from around the world and mm -hmm. that often meant people graduated from you know, Stanford or Harvard or mm -hmm. um, Oxford or Cambridge mm -hmm. um, at the expense of people who mm -hmm. are studying here in you know, universities in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what they found is that you know, there's, uh, there's some really sharp people here and um, you know they are from Hong Kong, but there's also many who are from the mainland mm. uh, who are studying in universities in Hong Kong, um, and who have also been incredibly impressive. So, you know, I think um, uh, our experience is that there's just a, an incredibly rich talent pool uh, here. And of course, uh, China, you know, uh, the uh, uh, the quality of talent is incredibly impressive. Could you tell us a little bit? you know about uh, what's you know uh, because you have been here for for more than a decade so what's Hong Kong still attracted to you and also what else do you think you know Hong Kong's strengths to attract those uh, you know expertise uh, offshore yeah, well it's actually more than three <laughs> decades now <laughs> um, uh, you know Hong Kong um, is uh, is a fantastic city so you know one thing is that it is Stunningly beautiful. You know, mm. It is just you know. You look out the window here. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you walk around Hong Kong Island, um, and uh, there's really very few places, uh, very few cities um, around the world that can compare with Hong Kong in terms of natural beauty. Yes. You have the mountains. You have the sea. Um, you have beaches. You have um, you know, hiking literally within like 15 minutes of yeah. the business district, yes. district in Hong Kong. Um, and it is at the same time this incredibly efficient place um, for living and working, um, where you get things done in the city. Um, you've got you know, fantastic public transportation and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very safe place. Yeah. Um, Fantastic food, and you know, increasingly also a great place for culture. We have you know, these fantastic museums that have opened up. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, uh, it's 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 really a, a, a very sophisticated place. Um, so, you know, definitely a place where I felt comfortable um, and uh, that I call home. I think it's a place where you know, naturally, a lot of people um, find. It's very easy to uh, to settle down in uh, and feel comfortable in. So, how do you uh, see the development of family office sector in Hong Kong and other places in Asia? And the, what's the advantage of Hong Kong to attract people to set up family office here? Yeah, talking about Hong Kong, you know, we cannot forget uh, Hong Kong as, uh, you know, super connect 
uh, to connect uh, mainland China and the rest of the world. So what's the, you know, uh, uh, Super Connect can benefit uh, as I mentioned and also wealth management in Hong Kong? What do you think uh, that you are? So we talk about you know how uh, Super Connect uh, role can benefit uh, wealth management and also asset management industry here. So in general, Hong Kong as a uh, IFC. So what's Hong Kong's unique feature and advantage compared with other financial centers? So we have been talking uh, a lot about you know uh, Hong Kong as an uh, international finance and financial center. So could you give us three words to describe Hong Kong as the you know most one of the most important I have seen globally. Yeah, I like the three words. Thanks a lot, Peter. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed it.